Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Andre and the beast is right there ready to get going but today we are talking about fire management and wood. I think it's something very important. Uh, I bought a load of wood yesterday and I said you know what let's do it. It's fresh in my mind and uh, let's get right to it. So this is the firebox. Just gonna get it open. Nice and clean. So typically, this is gonna be a size, what people call a split. And what I do for my smoker, I know this is an extra step. I take off about four inches and I use that as well, but I just take my hatchet, break that up into smaller pieces. And typically what I'll do with, with the ax is split this. This isn't a huge one, so I would basically split it in three pieces to end up with smaller pieces like this. Depending on how big the actual uh, split is, that way I get it, I might break it down into four, maybe only two. But typically pieces like this, this way they fit in here no problem. And you can stack them whatever way you want. The reason I do this is because this smoker is actually very efficient because it is all insulated with the extra insulating in here as well. Uh, before, I used to do the fires right on the actual bottom of the uh, firebox, but I wasn't getting as good a fires as I thought I could. So I had Courtney. Courtney whipped up this little frame with a removable grill. And actually, since I've been using this, you get a lot more airflow feeding the fire, and it actually became more efficient. So it was a great addition. Thanks, Courtney. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's an evolution, but you need to really figure out your smoker. And I think I have it pretty dialed in right now. And uh, yeah, enough talk, and let's just... Uh, get this thing going and I don't buy kindling all I do is take the splits cut them in half and then take my little hatchet and into little pieces like this and we're going to uh, do it this way the uh, the log cabin method I like this it works it's just it's easy it gives me a nice bed of coals too once I've got this lit there we go. I save all the bark that falls off because bark burns great. And uh, it's a, just a good way to use everything up. So I break up a bunch of pieces, put them in the middle. Honestly, it's that simple. I don't spend a lot of time with this. I do it like that. And uh, now to lighting it. If you've uh, watched uh, any of my shorts, you, you know about this thing. It's a, it's a pig on gas. There we go. I got it going enough now. We're just gonna let this uh, really catch and uh, continue. Now at this point, it's not gonna give me nearly enough heat to uh, cook anything. So I'm gonna add more, more little pieces just to uh, really get this thing going. So typically in the summertime for me to heat up the smoker to get it to about the 225 to 250, it takes me around 20 to 25 minutes. In the winter, it's definitely gonna be longer because you've got all that cold steel that you really uh, wanna get heated up. Which is nice, it doesn't take long now, which is great. And doing it this way, it's a great way to use up all little scraps that you have, just throw them in there and uh, burn them up. Only hardwood though, only hardwood. Now at this point, it's been burning for a few minutes. 
So I will take a couple smaller pieces and put them on. I've just closed the door to really let that uh, fire get going, get those bigger pieces going. And you do notice it is a little smoky. It's not where I want it yet, but that's okay. It's, it's heating up and it will get there. Now at this point, the fire has been going just under 10 minutes and I just looked at the, uh, the thermometer, we're at 150. So we're, we're climbing nice. And uh, I threw another piece on because it wasn't uh, where I wanted it. Fire needs air and that's why, and by using this grate, I give the fire more air to burn cleaner. Also, as you can see, the, this is by design. The door does not have any uh, holes in it or any way for extra air to come in. So we have this uh, guide on the side here with notches so I can restrict the amount of air I want feeding that fire to make it bigger or keep it smaller. Generally, I keep it in the last position here to give it full air and uh, the damper on the smokestack is open fully to get that airflow in and out. I want to mention that I've got this bucket here full with all the split pieces in the size I want. So typically this is plenty for me to do a brisket. Uh, last time I did briskets, I only used about three quarters of this once that fire and temperature was all dialed in. Reason being, it's a very efficient because the smoker is also insulated and I really believe that it makes a huge difference because you're not losing all that heat that you're creating here, which means I don't have to use as much wood. So you've got to know your smoker and Every smoker is going to be different. And if you know that, you just use that to your advantage. I just checked the temperature. It's showing 225. And there's our fire. I want it a, a little hotter. So all I'm going to do is add another piece on top. and we'll be good. That'll get me to where I want. And then it's just a matter of adding that, that burn down a little bit, add another piece. Let that burn down a little bit, add another piece. So typically for me right now, that's probably every 20, 25 minutes or so. And I just let that burn, come back and check, put another piece on. When it comes to wood type, my the guy where I get the wood has a mix of usually red oak, white oak, and maple, and then some beech in there, which is good. Uh, there are so many theories on this. And now if you actually look up, I don't know the specific number, but in North America, I think there's anywhere from 15 to 20 different species of oak trees. The wood's gonna be different if you go from, let's say, Texas, Arizona, down there, or if you go to Northern Ontario, which has really extreme cold winters, uh, the oak's gonna be different, the maple will be different, uh, the flavoring will be different. So it's a very regional thing. Uh, when they say post oak, that I think is more very specific to a, a region down in the US, depends on the type of soil it's uh, grown in, how much water the tree has. All those factors really determine how the wood's gonna turn out. And honestly, by, my, by me using this mix of oak and maple, I find it tastes great. Uh, if you can tell the difference, you're like one in a million Unless you're using a very specific wood like hickory or something like that, which is a very strong wood, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. I'm just happy with the final result. It tastes great. Everybody usually loves it. 
I'm not going to very, be very picky. I'm, I've been very happy with the mix of wood I usually get. Uh, my supplier, it's all seasoned wood, so it's been cut down and it's sat around for at least a year. He actually kiln dries it if he needs to, to get the moisture content down in the wood. So I'm confident in saying when I buy wood from him, I can buy it, cut it, and use it the same day if I have to. I typically keep my wood in the garage. I have a corner where I stack it all nice and uh, keep it dry. It's, a, it's away from the elements and that's the main thing, keeping it dry and uh, you'll have a much better smoke. So at this point in the whole starting of the smoker and getting that fire up to temperature, we're up at temp. So right now, technically if I was smoking something, I would have it ready and it would go in the smoker at this point because everything's hot enough for a temperature. I got a good fire going, it's where I want it and I just need to maintain it now and uh, have fun with it. Now it's very hard to tell by looking at the smokestack here, but that is what I want to see from the smoke coming out of it. I know it's good, I know my fire's running good, it's at temperature, and everything's good. Perfect for smoking. When you have that really thick white smoke, what you saw at the beginning, that is not good. This is what people call dirty smoke. It will really affect the flavor of your product. You want it like that, or sorry, you want it like it is right now. Very hard to see that bluish tinge to it. That gives you the best flavoring, coloring. And uh, yeah, that all starts with your fire. You have to have a good fire and you'll get that. Well, everybody, I'm going to end this video now. Uh, I know I could go so much more in depth with everything, but I really just wanted to show you what I do with my smoker. There are so many different theories and ways to do things and what kind of smoker you have, uh, the firebox, the size of it. All of it matters. Is it a hot summer day like today? or is it in the middle of winter? That's all gonna matter as well. But my thing is, know your smoker, get out there and use it, ex get that experience, and use good wood. Spend a little bit more, go to a reputable dealer or somebody that sells good hardwood that you know you can always get a good product because that is the basics of smoking. Keep that fire going and have a good hardwood. Enough of me talking now. Guys, thanks for watching and happy eating.